Hi guys, in this video we're going to take a look at false conjectures, disproved by counterexample, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So how can we disprove false conjectures? There are conjectures which we can initially believe to be true. Consider the conjecture all prime numbers are odd. However, it is possible that they are false, no matter how many examples support the conjecture. Consider the odd prime numbers 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on. So far, the conjecture is looking good. Instead of proving the conjecture false, we only need to find one example for which it does not hold. The number 2 is prime, but is even. This is an example for which our conjecture, all prime numbers are odd, does not hold. We would like to develop intuition for determining when a conjecture is likely to fail. This is because a method of disproving a conjecture is to find an example when it fails. So how can we do disproof by counterexample? The process of finding an example for which a conjecture is false is called disproof by counterexample. We take a conjecture and we provide a counterexample which goes against the conjecture and this gives us a disproof, i.e. our conjecture is certainly false. We should first state the conjecture which may be posed as a statement to be proved or disproved. As an example, we may be asked to prove or disprove the following statement. For all a, b in the real numbers, if we have that b squared is strictly greater than a squared, then this implies that b is strictly greater than a. In this situation, we may try a few different pairs of numbers. As an example, if b is 2, then 2 squared is greater than, say, if a is 1, 1 squared. And this does certainly imply that 2 is greater than 1. But we need to consider the set of numbers involved. We have been given that a and b are real numbers. Thinking outside the box can result in a successful counterexample. Let's say we have a is equal to 1 and b is equal to minus 2. We have that minus 2 all squared is strictly greater than 1 squared, but minus 2 is strictly less than 1. And therefore, having minus 2 all squared being greater than 1 squared does not imply that minus 2 is greater than 1, because it's not. Hence, the result is disproved, since we have found an example for which the conjecture does not hold. So, for all a, b in the real numbers, b squared being greater than a squared implies that b is greater than a is an untrue statement. There are often infinitely many counterexamples to choose from when trying to disprove a false conjecture. If we have our same conjecture for all a, b in the real numbers, b squared being greater than a squared implies b being greater than a, then we are able to disprove this statement with, for example, a being equal to 1 and any b in the real numbers so long as b is strictly less than minus 1. Because then b squared is going to be strictly greater than 1. For any number b less than minus 1, say minus 1.5, minus 1.1, minus 100 and so on, b squared will be strictly greater than 1. And 1 is equal to a squared. So b squared will be greater than a squared, but b will be less than a. This gives us infinitely many counterexamples to choose from. However, there are also situations which do not have infinitely many counterexamples to a false conjecture. Let's say in this case we are asked again to prove or disprove the following statement. The square root of x squared plus 9 is greater than or equal to x over 2 plus 3 for all x in the integers. If we examine the graphs over the whole real numbers of y is equal to the square root of x squared plus 9 and the line y is equal to x over 2 plus 3, then the two graphs meet at 0 and at 4 in the x. 
However, in between, it's actually the case that the line is higher. And all of the values, x equals 1, x equals 2, and x equals 3, correspond to counterexamples. This is because the respective graph is higher, which means it is certainly not lower. And we're only allowed to choose integers because that's what's in the statement for all x in the integers. But here we only have finitely many counterexamples because for every other integer apart from 1, 2, and 3, the statement is true. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to disprove by counterexample the statement that if n is shifting greater than 2 is a prime number, then n plus 2 is also prime. Our first step is to write down the first few numbers satisfying n being greater than 2 and being prime. So we have all of the prime numbers except 2, and the first few are 3, 5, 7, and 11. Our second step is to consider n plus 2 for each of these prime numbers. We have our 3 plus 2, we have our 5 plus 2, and then we have 7 plus 2, and 11 plus 2. Now our statement tells us that n plus 2 should be prime, but we're looking to disprove this. And so all we need to do is to find one of these numbers not being a prime number. Our first one is equal to 5, which is a prime number. Our second one is equal to 7, which is a prime number. Our third one is equal to 9, and our last one is equal to 13, which is a prime number. Our third step is to identify a counterexample. In particular, the number 9 is not prime. And therefore, n equals 7 is a counterexample. Our fourth step is to write down the conclusion. We have that the following statement is false. If n is prime and n is greater than 2, then n plus 2 is also prime. And this is false because we found a counterexample. Our second example asks us to prove or disprove the statement that all lines in the xy plane are perpendicular. Our first step is to write down the general form of a line. We have our general form of a line being y is equal to mx plus c. Our second step is to consider two general lines. We can have our first line being y is equal to m1 multiplied by x plus c1. And our second line, y is equal to m2, x plus c2. We've labelled it by the first line and the second line, giving us our subscripts. Our third step is to recall the perpendicular condition. If two lines are to be perpendicular, we need that m1 multiplied by m2 has to be equal to minus 1. Our fourth step is to choose values which don't satisfy this condition. In particular, if we have m1 being equal to 1, and then say m2 being equal to 2, then certainly m1, m2 is equal to 2, which is not minus 1. And then we can choose any c values from both the lines. The simplest values are c1 equals 0 and c2 equals 0, since these values are irrelevant to them being perpendicular. Our fifth step is to write down the full counterexample. We have our first example, which is y is equal to m1x plus c1, and we have m1 equals 1 and c1 equals 0, and this gives us y is equal to x. Our second line is going to be y is equal to 2x, because m2 is 2 and c2 is 0. Our sixth step is to demonstrate again that the lines are not perpendicular. Our m1 is 1, our m2 is 2, and this is equal to 2, which is not equal to minus 1. And hence, the lines are not perpendicular. Our last step is to write down the conclusion, and our conclusion is that the following statement is false. All lines in the xy plane are perpendicular. Our last example asks us to prove or disprove the statement that if n is a natural number and prime, then n squared plus n plus 11 is also prime. Our first step is to write down the first few primes. We have 2, 3, 5, and 7 as a good number of first few primes. We hope to find a counterexample early on. Our second step is to consider n squared plus n plus 11 for each prime. We have our four cases, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, 
n is equal to 5 and n is equal to 7. In each case, we're going to consider n squared plus n plus 11. For our first case of n equals 2, we get 17. For our second case, we get 23. For our third case, we get 41. And for our last case, we get 67. Our third step is to determine whether there are any counterexamples. We have our four numbers, 17, 23, 41, and 67. And these numbers are in fact all prime. Therefore, we currently have no counterexamples. Our fourth step is to consider a particular value that will be useful. We have our expression n squared plus n plus 11. And so if we consider n is equal to 11, then our expression n squared plus n plus 11 is going to be the expression 11 squared plus 11 plus 11. And this is particularly nice because all three of these terms have a factor of 11, and therefore it can't possibly be prime. Our fifth step is to state why the value obtained is not prime. We can take our expression 11 squared plus 11 plus 11. We can factor out the 11, so we get 11 on the outside, and we're going to get also 11 on the inside, plus 1 plus 1. And this is equal to 11 multiplied by 13. So we have that in particular 11 and 13 are factors of this number. And this means this number is not prime. So we have found a counterexample. Our last step is to state the conclusion. Our conclusion is that the following statement is false. If n is a natural number and n is prime, then n squared plus n plus 11 is also prime. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap and smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.